SolidWorks Flow Simulation has several additional modules, each which add even more capability to our already powerful CFD package. All of these modules are embedded inside the existing SolidWorks Flow Simulation interface, keeping the software dynamic and easy to use. Here we are going to look at the SolidWorks Flow Simulation Electronic Cooling Module. This part of the package is tailored towards helping designers and engineers refine the layout of components and enclosures to ensure they meet installation and performance needs. One of the main capabilities the Electronics Cooling Module has is the ability to apply dual heating conditions such as current, voltage or even a contact resistance. So in this study we can review the temperatures to see if the fuse case will be hot to the touch. We can also review to see if the element is above its melting temperature. We can dig further into the design and we can then look at voltage plots, resistivity and electrical current and density plots. These plots can be shown in a range of different ways to really help you understand how this extra electrical input affects your designs. These plots can also be easily copied to different projects or configurations, not only making the study easy to set up but also easy to post-process and communicate with others. However, the electronics cooling module has several other great capabilities. In this control box, we wish to look at the peak temperatures of some of the electronic components to see how we can improve the cooling on these components. But setting up a study like this, it can be tricky to get the boundary conditions to accurately represent the behavior seen in real life. So with this in mind, the electronics cooling module comes with a huge library of commercially available fans, their dimensions, and the performance data, streamlining the workflow and improving the accuracy of your results. However, this library extends much further. It also includes heat sinks, porous media, thermoelectric coolers, the capability to add heat pipes, semiconductors, and even circuit boards. Here in this example, we can see the circuit board has been added to the study. This is so we can accurately model the heat transfer around the key components. Using the printed circuit board feature, rather than just applying one homogeneous material, we can specify individual layers and detail the board's thermal and electrical properties. This should ultimately allow for a much more accurate simulation and give us a realistic temperature profile across the board. Another feature of the electronics cooling module we can see used in this study is the two resistor component model. This method was created in line with various standards and as well as being more accurate, it allows the user to specify and review temperatures on the case, the board and the junction between the two. Once the setup is complete, the user can then run the flow simulation in the usual way. SolidWorks Flow Simulation has one of the most interactive solvers in the business. This allows you to see exactly what is happening while the study is running. You can even refine the mesh or change the solved parameters on the fly. This is great for checking concepts or making sure you have the study set up correctly, meaning you don't waste time waiting for unnecessary results. Once we have these results, we can then use some of the great plots to really understand thermal performance. This would be tricky to do even if we ran a physical test, but here in SolidWorks we can use some of the ISO plots to see how the airflow changes as we add vents into this model. Interestingly, the addition of these vents actually doesn't help to cool the chips. What we find is the airflow is actually moved away from the key areas, and the board and the key components that we're interested in actually increase in temperature. We can see this in more detail when looking at the surface plots. We can also look at the goal plots and compare and contrast how the temperatures change between the two configurations. This example really helps to highlight the benefits of upfront simulation, as it would have been a fair assumption to assume extra vents will aid cooling. However, this would have increased temperatures of the chips, unnecessarily increased noise levels, as well as added extra operation to the manufacturing process to laser cut the lid. On top of this, to compensate, the fan speed may have had to be increased, thus using more energy. In this next example, we have a high-powered array of LEDs. We're trying to improve an existing design as the lamp overheats. We don't want to change the outer casing as this may be expensive and involve injection molding costs. However, we can vary the heat sink internally, so we can use the SolidWorks design of experiments to optimize the shape and number of fins on the heat sink. This is easily set up by selecting the parameters the flow simulation can change 
and setting the min and max values. Flow simulation will then give us the optimum shape output. Here we can see the reduction in temperature this is given. More useful than that, we can also review a response surface. This graph really helps us to understand how our design changes are affecting thermal performance. So on this graph we have our goal, and our lowest point will usually be best suited to meet our thermal temperature requirements. However, here we can see we may be able to save some material costs and weight if we use the design from this end of the scale without compromising our thermal performance too much. This kind of insight is invaluable and can be an incredibly powerful tool. But for any more information on this or anything else in this video, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you.